thinking of investing, working, or starting a business in the cannabis industry? We've got you covered right here on Plant Problems. Hosted by Tony Frischconnect, Plant Problems takes a different approach to cannabis than what you're seeing and hearing from the mainstream media. Come along with Tony and be in the know about how to invest, work, or start a cannabis business. Let's get the show started with your host, Tony Frischconnect. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Plant Problems. My name is Tony Frischkinect, and I'm your host. If you haven't heard the show, uh, I'm getting close to my 100th episode, so I'm super excited. So those that you are new to the show, please listen for that. I'm going to do something that I think is really cool for, for my 100th episode, so be ready for that. Today, I've got an exciting guest on the show with me. Uh, he was actually one of my guests here uh, a little while ago, episode 49. I had to look back and see where I was at on that. But he's doing some really neat, unique stuff in the CBD industry. He's the CEO and co-founder of Restorative CBD. He's got trainings that he's just created. He also has a book that he just put out. So Charlie Pierre Marini, welcome to the show. How are we doing today, Charlie? Thanks, man. Thanks for having me back, man. I, I, I love your show and I love working with you. So I'm glad to be back. And I'm it sounds like we're coming back full circle. I was number 49 and now I'm what number 98 or 99. So yeah. Yeah. So I think you're going to be number 94, 95. So we're really close. close. Yeah. Yeah. So no, so this is good. And the reason why I brought Charlie in today, like I mentioned before, he's, he's got a, a lot of experience in CBD and he's really starting to uncover some stuff. And some of the stuff that he's created recently has made it very easy. Uh, it, you know, in our industry, things become so, it's so convoluted when you're trying to figure stuff out. And Charlie, you know, what? let let people know a little bit about you before we go into this, but I just want to make sure everybody knows. This is going to be an exciting episode, so stay tuned. Charlie, yeah. go ahead and uh, share with the uh, audience what a little bit about you and what brought you into the CBD world. Yeah, so uh, I'm a board certified physician assistant. Um, I have a master's degree in uh, physician assistant studies, a master's in public health, and a master's in physiology. Um, graduated in uh, 2015, and I've been practicing. Uh, I've moved into family medicine for a year after graduation, and then uh, now I moved into pain management, kind of urgent care. Um, through my journey, I kind of just developed, kind of based off of my first mentor and the first doctor I worked with, I developed a a liking and kind of a gravitation towards wellness um, and kind of more alternative mixing holistic and alternative medicine with uh, typical Western allopathic medicine. And I just got tired of writing, you know, scripts for opioids and scripts for stuff when there's really a, a, a baseline problem in some of these patients that can be fixed and can be addressed. I may never heal you, but I can at least, you know, alleviate and augment some of your pain and some of your, your ailments. Um, and so Basically, my story with CBD is like any other medical professional. They don't teach us about anything, endocannabinoid, CBD, nothing. I don't even think I had a lecture about endocannabinoid in my three master's degree courses. Um, and so it wasn't after I saw patient after patient in my pain management clinic, you know, CBD last couple of years has been obviously beginning bigger and bigger. So now it's more readily available. Patients are trying it. And I had a lot of patients trying it, getting varied results. Some of them, um, coming back positive with THC, even though the bottle specifically states this is THC free product. Um, you know, so is the industry in trouble? I, I, I had no idea. Is, the, is this a bad product? Is the patient lying to me? I had no idea. And it wasn't until I had um, an encounter with a patient who went, who kind of had a central pain syndrome due to a stroke and kind of went from not really interacting or talking very much to me during these appointments to having full conversations with me and, you know, her expressing to me, I know something is different. I feel different. Um, that then I started taking this serious uh, and I just started looking up that I went home that night and did a PubMed search of endocannabinoid system. And lo and behold, there's thousands of papers that no one ever tells you about. Um, and uh, I just started educating myself and I've kind of fallen into to be my mission to educate other medical professionals and the public about CBD, um, about cannabis, about the endocannabinoid system. And um, it's, it, it, there's a, still a lot of pushback, um, you know, even though, absolutely, the left, even with yeah. the hemp bill legalizing CBD, 
there's still a lot of doctors. I mean, I just had a patient here in my clinic yesterday that uh, her primary care physician from a very large primary care group here in Phoenix referred her to me because they don't, you know, you want CBD and talk about insomnia and sleep goes, there's a guy, go see him, right? Which leaves a business opportunity for me, but also it leaves a void in education at the patient level when the patients first interact with the doctors and PAs. Well, one thing I want to share with you is, you know, the audience out there is Charlie is, you know, he's got I'll, I'll give him a lot of props because he's Thanks. got a lot of educational knowledge, but not only that is he's got a drive for entrepreneurship and just knowing Charlie only this short time over the last year, I've seen him move and he's moving in some pretty amazing directions and yeah. he's moving like an entrepreneur and he's thinking about things. And you know, that's, that's, that's one of the other reasons why we have him on today because he's put some stuff together that it really takes some, foresight to see the future and he's figured out some areas you know such as training the doctors and really getting them comfortable and you brought up something here a little bit ago you said endocannabinoid system yeah in, in a nutshell can you share you know just a quick overview of what that is and how that works in our body yeah that's a great question so endo means with n and cannabinoid is referring to uh, receptors that are cannabis like. And so, uh, we have a whole system in our body that is charged with, uh, keeping us in homeostasis. And what homeostasis is, is basically we are fraught every day with outside stress, even inside stress that is trying to bring us away from a set point up or down. And the endocabinet system is our supercomputer that is charged with trying to keep us at a certain set point, not too high, not too low. Um, and it's, it's an amazing, just diverse system that not only includes the CB1 and CB2 receptors that are most commonly known, but now we're finding that our body, we've known for many years that our body produces uh, uh, products that are just carbon copies of the CBD and THC molecule. Our body produces these naturally, and we have receptors that these bind to. So that's why when you take in cannabis or CBD, you have these effects because it's binding the receptors that our body already has. And it's our body, this is our body system that works day in and day out to make sure that we are working at a level that keeps us alive. And uh, we're finding that this system goes beyond the CB receptors that we already know about. It goes into other receptors that we are just now discovering that are outside of what they call the endocabinoid system. Um, and there's receptors all the way from your brain to your pancreas, to your spleen, to your reproductive organs, to your blood vessels, to your bone, to your eyes. I mean, it's ubiquitous is what they say. So that's kind yeah. Of it, yeah, no, that's perfect. You know, guys, of course you can, uh, you can get some more information on this. We'll tell you actually how, t how you can find some of this that Charlie is, is sharing with people, but you know, when it comes down to you know, sharing this with professional, which I think is awesome, starting at the problem and it's the problem of knowledge and education for these guys. So when you, when you bring up or you talk to any medical profession about endocannabinoids, endocannabinoids do they even does it even do they does it even click at all no. does it no really I, I, it, it, yeah i've i have a in, from the entrepreneurial standpoint it gives a void right and that's what is entrepreneurs but you and i feel we try and fill a void right you see a need and you fill it um so it leaves a good business opportunity but it leaves a sad a sad state of affairs for patients uh, you know, a lot of patients coming to pr providers, Hey, what do you think about the CBD stuff? Oh, you just want to get high, you know, go away. But now you've just shut down of someone that could actually use a plant uh, to help them heal. Um, and so it, you know, it's kind of like a dichotic relationship. It's good for business because it leaves a void, but it's bad for patient care. You're also coming up in a rec state here is starting to happen. It already went right? legal. Yeah. It's yes. already done. Yeah. So even though it goes legal, it takes some time for everything, regulations to work its way out, to actually yep. understand what's going around you for law enforcement to understand, for yep. city officials to really click, right? And so you're you're dealing with that, but you're you're kind of in this time in between medical and rec that it, I think you're going to see some big moves out of it because people are going to want to see the differentiation between medical and rec. Are yeah. you seeing any of that right now? Is anything coming out where, uh, you know, there, there's a, there's a lot of confusion that 
well, what is medical? What is rec? What, what does that yeah. really mean? Um, I, I, yeah, in my day to day. So I started a, I, I, have a, I have a wellness clinic that I kind of combined with my ch- a chiropractor business partner uh, and myself and another doctor. And we have kind of a different approach to medicine. So I think we kind of get a lot of patients that gravitate towards us. And I'm seeing a lot of patients that are coming into the cannabis space, uh, very inexperienced and have zero, very little knowledge, except for when they tried marijuana in the sixties, when it was, you know, you know, uh, who knows what it was in there. And nowadays we, nowadays we've got scientists with PhDs growing plants and, you know, modifying phenotypes and genetics and stuff like, I mean, so it's not, it's, you know, better than it, it's down to a science. Um, yeah. And it's, so a lot of patients are coming in and they're smoking something that they think, Hey, I, I used this when I was in high school, let's try it again. And they are getting extraordinarily stoned way too high. Um, and then they're scared. They put it away and they're like, oh, I'm done with that. I'm never gonna use that again. That didn't work for me. So there is a void of education because now there's an influx of people coming in across the whole country that don't know how to use these products because of lack of knowledge, uh, lack of access to knowledge. And the bud tenders, you know, the people behind the, the counter, the dispensaries, at, their knowledge level is limited, but they also there's a legal aspect where they can't say certain things. Yeah, um, and they, they can't, can't get claim involved. certain statements, right? Correct. I mean, they can say, well, I see a lot of patients with back pain and a lot of them use this, right? And mm-hmm. so like, they got to kind of skirt the issue, but- So can you, patients- can, are you able to get more in depth with your patients on on the level yes. of that because of your stature and where you are in the community? Correct. Yeah. As a medical professional in Arizona, I'll, I'll have in-depth conversations and um, kind of this is branching into, you and I talked about my coaching business of nationally trying to get this co- cannabis coaching business up and going because I'm seeing a lot of patients in a lot of states. I spoke at the uh, CBD expo in Indianapolis uh, three weeks, two, three weeks ago. And it was me, a two pharmacists and a lawyer that has a, one of the biggest S, uh, FDA approved USDA organic grow in South America. And he import, I mean, a very, yeah. very high level panel. And one gentleman raised his hand, an older guy. And he says, how do I find people like you in my state? I don't know where to go. I don't know what doctor. And I was like, you know what? Maybe this is an idea to start something where I can actually help people cross state lines. See, you know, and one thing that I enjoy that you're doing is, you know, you started this with a bigger vision on helping patients, right? Yep. So the, the, the great part about where you're at is you're aligning yourself still to do that, but you're finding different business avenues along the way to accomplish that. And, and, you know, it, it, it's really, that's not an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy thing to figure out that focus. Like where do I want to hit and where do I want to land in five or 10 years and still stay on that path? Like, yeah. I, I mean, how many shiny objects are you seeing on a daily basis? Oh my God. You ask my wife, I see one every minute. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, the over ending goal is, you know, when I started the CBD, my CBD business, restorative CBD, it was just out of wanting to get legitimate products that I knew that were higher concentrations. That was a medical level that I had control over where it was made and how it was made and, you know, testing. And that was it. I wanted to give it to patients. I thought I'd have a line. But as, as I've just kind of delved into it, I really, really love speaking about this. So I'm in five uh, expos this year. Oh, wow. Um, That's uh, awesome. Speaking about, you know, CBD as an alternative to opioid medicine. Um, and so what what I've just seen is, you know how any entrepreneur goes, right? You, you think the goal is here, but now the kind of target has moved. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean it's different. It's just, it's kind of changed forms. And mm-hmm. as an entrepreneur, the, the path is never straight. It is as winding as anything can be. Um so let's let's get back to some of your training. I want to talk about the more in-depth knowledge for the patient. Yeah. You know, um this is a new course that you've actually developed. Uh I I was able to read a little bit for the medical professional side which I really enjoyed. Um and so how easy is this for uh the new patient to understand? Is it so I think, so the CBD two oh so the CBD education series is my, uh, my kind of entrance into the education realm during COVID when, you know, I, my clinic hours got cut down. And so I was kind of bored and my wife's like, why don't you start a CBD course? And I was like, okay. So I took, <laughs> so 
uh, she needed, she needed me to be distracted by something. So, she <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so uh, I created this course and it's a little bit, so that's why I called it CBD 201. Um, it's kind of more of an advanced knowledge course uh, for patients that have some, some, an idea of what the endocabinoid system is, has heard mm -hmm. about it, wants a little bit more knowledge. Um, and then from that, I created a 301 for specifically for uh, uh, medical professionals and really talked about drug, drug interactions, dosing kind of stuff like that. Um, at some point I'll have to go back and create a 101 that's kind of for your grandma that is, has no idea about any of this marijuana stuff, hemp stuff, CBD, and kind of start at ground zero. I felt like that was going to be a little bit more of a challenge for me rather than kind of starting at a midpoint. So yeah. I just started, I started that. So, well, you know, you, you brought up a couple of good points, dosing, right. Yeah. Especially for, Medical professions are, I mean, when they prescribe something, they need to know if it's going to, you said drug interaction, how's that going to act? They're probably, my guess is they're like, that's the farthest from in their mind. If they're going to prescribe anything is like, I don't know anything about cannabis and how it's going to react. So they're more than likely, I mean, they, they're going to say no because of fear, right? A hundred percent. I mean, 200%, uh, the lack of <laughs> the lack of knowledge leads to fear because as medical professionals, we love algorithms and we love knowing drug, drug interactions and starting doses. And I have apps on my phone that show you every dose where to start and, you know, possible titration schedules. But like I just had a conversation with a patient yesterday, the beautiful thing and the most frustrating thing about the cannabis plant is, is everybody responds differently. And this becomes a personal journey. And that's what mm -hmm. makes it frustrating for me as a medical professional, but also more fun and more engaging for a patient. Because now if you truly want to get relief at this, now it's not me just writing a prescription, putting the onus back on you, take two of these and call me in a week. It's like, hey, we're going to start here. I want you to take a journal every day and I want you to slowly go up every couple of days. And I want you to just write, how am I feeling? What's my pain scale? How's my activity level? My sleeping, you know, taking these notes. And so it sounds doing. like you're really doing it on more of a macro level than anything. Are, yeah. Oh yeah. Are, are, right. I, yeah. I, I start patients at a similar dose and I go up and down and I have the patient titrate themselves. I mean, you're adults and patients know what's best for their body. And so, how much interaction are you having with your patients? Um, right now? I mean, they they sit next to me in my clinic um, on my coaching business. It'll be kind of a zoom or a FaceTime. Thing. Yeah. I do half an hour appointments and I sit down and, and ask a lot of open-ended questions. Yeah. Are, are you meeting with them once a week, twice a week? Are you um, the first, on calls, it, stuff it, like yeah, that? Yeah, it's kind of based on the patients. Okay. Um, one, for sure, once in the beginning. And then I'd like to do once a week, depending on if they're how new they are to like full can, if they're using a full cannabis product. CBD, I kind of, you know, every two to three weeks. But I would like to, if someone's new to medical marijuana, once a week, get in with them, see them, look at their journal, talk with them. How are you feeling? What did you experience? You know, stuff like that. How are their families responding to Good their question. journey? Um, I, more and more becoming supportive. The lady I saw was a retired lawyer. Um, and so she was, you know, she's probably in her seventies or eighties. And so she is anti cannabis as you could be right. Growing in that era lawyer. Oh my God. You know, using cannabis was holy crap. Um, but her daughter-in-law started using cannabis to help her sleep. And she gave it to her mother-in-law and she's like, you need to try this. And she's like, wow, this worked. Went to her doctor and her doctor was like, I don't know anything about this. Go see Charlie. Okay. And then she ends up in my, in my, you know, my chair. But I think more and more families are becoming accepted of this because it's becoming more mainstream, right? So there's a couple of CBD companies that are publicly traded on the NASDAQ. Mm -hmm. Um, it's gone from the days of in your back van. You, I mean, you wrote a whole book about this, right? It, it's gone from the days yeah. of black back of your van in your basement, bunch of hippies smoking stuff to, we have medical professionals and scientists that are changing genetics in the plant and learning how to really make this into a mainstream thing. So I think patients now a lot of athletes in the mainstream are using it and advocating for its change and, you know, sports. So it's becoming, it's not, it's way less taboo and it's becoming more accepted. So it's, it pay, families are uh, the bib overarching goal, I think is a lot of people are searching for more holistic and natural approaches to their health than pharmaceutical agents. And so a lot of people are embracing the cannabis and CBD 
for that more than anything. So well, for those, you know, for those out, out there that are like, just like your, uh, the member in the audience said, well, where do I find people like you? I mean, where do you send them in other states at this point? Do you know very many other people that are? No, I mean, my, my brain went to maybe I'll create a, a kind of a weed maps for CBD professionals. And I was like, how do I monetize it? I don't know. And so mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I'm going to take the bull by the horns and I'm going to start my own CBD and cannabis coaching business that can go across state lines. Um, but my recommendation is for if you're not able to sign up on my program for whatever reason, but if you want to go see someone in your area is there are can you know, if you have medical cannabis that's legal in your state, there's those doctors that you could try and follow up with them. Um, but I find a lot of those cannabis doctors are just writing the prescriptions. They really don't know much about the cannabis. They're just taking the money in for the, you know, for writing the script or the recommendation for cannabis. Um, so there's still another void, but you got to do research. I think, um, Project CBD is a good place to start. There's a lot of good resources on there. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's a pretty big void of knowledgeable professionals in this area. That's good. I, you know, I, of course it depends on a lot, right? It depends on your regulations that are happening, depends on your market, whether or not marijuana or cannabis legalization has happened. Um, yeah. Have you seen uh, an increase in your business since recreation actually happened? In my CBD business, yeah, uh, it's pretty steady. Um, okay. I think I get more inquiries now because people are people. I mean, my dad was like, when it's, when they passed the proposition here in Arizona, he's like, "Oh, is that going to hurt your business?" I said, "No, CBD is a totally different. It's a it's different. It may help it because more people are going to be. Oh, it's it's legal now. It's a little bit less taboo. And I don't, you know, people still this day. My sister's a nurse and she uses her my CBD for her anxiety and. And she tells people about it and nurses and they're like, Oh, that's, I don't want to use cannabis. She's like, it's not cannabis. It's a hemp derived product. And there's still a lot of, a lot of ground to make up in the medical profession, man. It's also, I'm guessing another reason why you wrote your book, you know, yeah. what is CBD CBD education for medical professionals. Uh, I am assuming it's going to, there's going to play off of your CBD 301 here, or is it completely different? How, how it's, is it laid out? completely different CBD education by medical, by a medical professional. So it's kind of more of a Kindle version for the patients just to kind of learn about basic level CBD. Um, it's not, uh, my next book would be tailored towards medical professionals, but I'm only one person. <laughs> so yeah, no, um, I hear you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to get more literature, more education out there just to get people educated. So they, you know, even if they don't ever want to use CBD or cannabis, at least they have an educated opinion about this. Mm -hmm. and it's not just what they're learning from their uncle Joe in the back of his van that loves smoking doobies, right? It's like, Hey, there's medical professionals out there that are embracing this. Like I may not agree with what you're taking, but I understand it. And that's, that's, that's fine too. I got a question for you yeah. that I've, I've been wanting to ask you, cause I, I was going through this and why is can the cannabis plant so misunderstood and misrepresented? You know, all these confusions of yeah. that's why you're doing a lot of this, I see. But why is that? Why is that the case? And that is a great question. And how much time do you have? Uh, so, I think, <laughs> um, so I think it starts back. So if you go all the way back to when cannabis kind of started becoming into the medical medical community was uh, Dr. William O'Shaughnessy in the 1800s in India was an Irish uh, doctor that was practicing in Calcutta, India, started watching these, these Indian women using these teas and these tinctures for menstrual pains and for headaches and for aches and pains. And he's like, well, what is this? So he started observing it, using it in animals and he noticed that it's helping. So he brought it back to England and the UK and um, then it kind of started making its way into medicine. Um, and it wasn't until like the 1900s when, uh, when American physicians were using it and it was actually part of their repertoire. They had marijuana tinctures in their office that they were giving to patients. Um, I think, uh, probably three things really killed the marijuana, medical marijuana cannabis thing, uh, th uh, uh stuff in America. One was, one of it was the marijuana tax uh, mm -hmm. that everyone's kind of familiar with that put tax uh, on people that were not so much that were people that were selling it. Um, and so that kind of brought a whole, uh, a lot of stuff down. The second thing was Bayer, uh, invented aspirin. Mm -hmm. And so patients then started to be able to take a pill instead of using a fumbling with a tincture and 
how, how much do I take? And every tincture is different from every batch. And so uh, that, that really killed it. And then I think the government- Well, the delivery of systems, we see that in the evolution of cannabis right now. So yeah. I, yeah. I can, I can co- totally see how it's like, oh, this is so much easier. Just... Oh, it's way easier to pop a pill. But mm-hmm. what people forget is aspirin was made from a uh, bark of a tree. So it's still a natural product too. So, um, and then I think the third is, I think the government pinned a lot of the marijuana stuff on immigration and kind of lower level class society stuff. And so it kind of got a stigma to it. And then that just took off. And then, you know, um, uh, Asinger, you know, and all of his stuff. I mean, if you look at Nixon's war on drugs, when he had the DEA, look at all the stuff, we spent millions of dollars as a, com- as a government. And they came back and basically said, yeah, it actually isn't as bad as we think it is. It's actually not that bad mm-hmm. of a thing. Yeah, There's- they never really publicized it, right? No, of course not. But they basically went and said, nope, it's it's bad. It's a schedule one when there's never been a recorded overdose death of cannabis because there's no receptors on your brainstem. So it doesn't repress your breathing systems like opioids do. Mm-hmm. So you, in order for you to overdose on cannabis, you have to smoke like like 45,000 pounds. It was like some it's some abnormal amount of amount of marijuana in order for you to potentially die. Um so that's my long-winded reason of like no no it. that's that's perfect I, I i you know you gave us three points those were great um and you know before i let you go i know we've got everybody's busy but you know i kind of want to get an idea on what kind of research and how you put this together like what how much t- how much time did you invest in like really making something uh, very very uh you know easy to read but also factual Oh man. Um, probably a good part of six to eight months of putting together, like building websites, compiling, um, you know, going through medical marijuana 411, uh, is a national certification for providers in order to write medical scripts, medical recommend medical marijuana, in certain States. Um, so going through their training course, getting their book PubMed, um, you know, it took many, many months to kind of make sure that the information that I'm putting out and still, even if you go on PubMed, you know, one article and then an article and two years later, there's, st- there, there's differing, there's differing opinions, even on how many chemicals, how many see, how many cannabinoids are in the cannabis plant. Mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. And so it's could still be a hundred, little, could be a thousand, right. It could be 120. Some of them say 700 molecules. You know, so it's like, who knows? And so, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, just trying to find the common denominator and trying to get at least if I'm saying something, there is some type of knowledge that's backing this up in some type of, you know, literature. So you're not just flying by the seat of your pants here. No. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> hours of research. Yeah, reading. Uh, I uh, read almost all of the cannabis pharmacy, uh, but Dr. Andrew Wild wrote the forward on it. I forget who's the author on it. And so I'm um, just trying to stay up on the date on literature, which is uh, I have a sticky note on my desk uh, at home to kind of remind me, as you said, this stuff doesn't happen overnight is the amount of PubMed articles that were published uh, kind of going by decade. Mm-hmm. And from 1970 to 1980, I think there was like 60, right? Oh, wow. 1980 to 1990. I don't know the exact numbers, but mm-hmm. uh, it, it went up incrementally in the last 10 years. There's been thousands of published articles about this plant, but yet it's still schedule one. I don't know for how much longer. I, I think they're realizing that cats out of the bag and people are, you know, going to start, people are using it. Yeah. I think they're just figuring out how they're going to tax it and then they're going to put Correct. it together. <laughs> yeah. How the pharmaceutical companies can make their money out of it. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, so Charlie, uh, where can people find your book? So, uh, right now it's on Amazon Kindle. Um, so if you just type in, uh, CBD education from a medical professional, that's one way to find it. Um, but how much is it? Uh, nine ninety nine. Okay. Yep. Affordable. Absolutely. Um, and so yeah, I just want people to learn from it and learn about this amazing molecule CBD. Um, you can take my course, the CBD education series, uh, com. You can take that. Um, and, uh, my website, my restorative CBD website, has got a lot of knowledge on it. I, I really, I try and do a podcast once a month, but I get busy, but, um, yeah. 
Yeah. So guys, if you want to hear more about Charlie, uh, he, all his information is going to be in the blog page. So you'll be able to see that. Uh, but you, you can also, he's got a ton of stuff on his website. So if you're, if you're semi curious about if it could help my ailments, if it can, you know, just make my life better, spend some time on his website and check it out, see what he's got in there. And, you know, there's no, I'm not bringing him on here to have him sell his stuff. He just has stuff that's available if you want to yeah. dig deeper into it and really understand it. I mean, you know, he said it earlier, his mission is to truly help the patient and really understanding this. And, you know, one of the really huge things that I noticed during our conversation here is, you know, he's taking more care with his patients than 99% of the doctors out there. I mean, I, you know, I visited hundreds of doctors in my life and most of the time it's like, what are you feeling? What's this at? Okay. Then they write a prescription and that's the last you hear from them. They don't spend any time with you. So if anything, just the evolution of creating that patient care, I think is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that kind of comes to uh, speaks a lot of my health coaching uh, training that I'm going through right now that I'm trying to finish up. Um, but also just getting burned out from typical medicine and seeing a patient every 15 minutes, you know, my, I work in an urgent care uh, part-time I used to, and my last shift, I saw 40 patients by myself in 12 hours. Right. I mean, you physically can't give good patient care. You cannot. Um, so you, yeah, no. And you're bringing up something too, that uh, as entrepreneurs that we have to do and, I mean, you've had a second job for how long now? Well, I had a full-time job for over a year and a half. And yeah. then between the days off, building my new clinic that I've, I've recently went full-time and I quit my full-time job and branched out here and building the CBD stuff, building my book, building my education course, now building my coaching company. And um, I mean, at the end of the day, like I talked to my wife, my Je- uh, Jessica, I come home, I'm like, man, I'm so tired. She goes, but you just seem so, you just seem like you're fulfilled. I was like, man, every day here, I don't care how tough it is. Cause I ruin my own patients. Um, and I see my own patients. I don't have an MA. Um, and so it doesn't matter how tough it is here because I know these patients are getting good quality care and I'm actually helping and listening to them. You know, you sound I mean, energized. Yeah. I mean, I, I use my biggest part of my business <laughs> is actually doing dry needling and acupuncture on patients. Oh right? yeah. 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 We don't teach you that in school, but I had two people come in today yesterday that couldn't even walk their back was, you know, in a spasm in 15 minutes with dry needling, they walking out fully, fully, you know, fully walking. So I would love to talk to you about that sometime yeah. cause it's a very interesting uh, process. I've experienced it a couple of times for some PT yeah. stuff, but um, well, great. Thanks for being on the show guys. I want to thank you guys for listening. I, I hope you were able to get something. If anything, read up on CBD. When your family members, if you're really interested, read up on it. You can go visit uh, Charlie's site, but just start doing some research and understanding what you're doing because, you know, Char- one of the reasons Charlie started this company, I know because of our our last discussion, is you know quality. The quality of products out there, there's a lot of crap on the market. And when you're putting crap into you and you don't know exactly what it is because they don't really share it on the label it might not be anything what it says. It might be very small active ingredient. And so you'll see that in differences of pricing. So make sure you know what you're, what you're getting into if you start buying this, because there's no need to spend a hundred or $200 on some snake oil. Cause that's what it is a lot of the time. Right, Charlie. Yeah. You don't have to, you don't have to buy my CBD. I tell patients, there's no pressure in buying my products. It's as long as you're buying a reputable company, um, and when I go to these expos, the, one of the first questions people ask, like, how do you know a company is reputable? Go to their website and look at the about me page. If you, if they don't have an about me page, that is like number one, I would, I would click off and go away. Right. What's their story. Even if it's a mom and dad that started this because they got relief from their kids, epilepsy, whatever it is, that's at least a story. And they believe in this. It's not just someone making money mm-hmm. um, and look at lab results. You know, everyone talks about that. Uh, and just, you know, call the company, pick their brain, ask them, you know, if they're making outrageous claims here, take our CBD, it's going to cure your cancer. Take our CBD. It's going to cure that. Uh, you can't what's the, it. what's the, uh, FDA is definitely, uh, keeping their eyes on those guys, but there's still a ton of that because they're getting Correct. away. They're with trolling, it, right? man. Yeah. 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 So 
so guys go check out his go check out his book on amazon and also uh check out his courses cbd if you're a professional uh, if you're a medical professional, check out CBD 301. And if you're a patient just looking to more in-depth knowledge, check out CBD 201. Charlie, it's been great having you on. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to your continued growth and talking with you as you go through the process because you're doing some amazing stuff. Guys, please reach out to me. And if you want me to ask Charlie some stuff about CBD, I, he's he's got the knowledge. Uh, we've we've got a good connection. Uh, I can introduce you guys directly if that's something where you want to talk to Charlie. If you feel comfortable with that, if you if you feel comfortable talking to him directly, that's fine too. So I just want to leave that open for you guys out there listening. So I hope you guys enjoyed the show today. I had a blast. I, I will see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for checking us out. Always visit plantproblem.com. You can visit us any and watch any episode there. See you guys next week. You've just listened to another insightful episode of Plant Problems. If you like what you heard so far, don't forget to tell your friends and colleagues. For additional resources or to leave a review, head over to plantproblem.com. Join us again next week on Plant Problems with Tony Frisch Connect. We look forward to having conversations with you as we go along this journey.